moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the whole water board, duh! Ooh, wait. Mm. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's wake up the football gods and let's get open for business here. Today, week number three on tap will be live streaming of course tonight nine o'clock eastern to make sure you tune in we'll be talking about of course the new york stinking jets against the new england patriots i gotta check and see what the money line is on there and see if my dad wants to uh get involved in that game uh tonight put any money on it my dad is having a ball with bet us and it's uh actually i'll say it's good because i talked to him actually a lot more here uh than usual because of you know the, the fun and stuff of going through and seeing what's what and who's who with the NFL. Um, before I get any deeper, uh, make sure Gina Dallas Diva, send her your thoughts and prayers. She had lost her dad um, some months back, who was a lifelong Dallas Cowboy fan. Her mom passed away last night, and so definitely want to let her know that we're thinking about her. Now this weekend, we've got the Dallas Cowboys on tap going against the Baltimore Ravens, and I'm going to say a desperation bowl between both teams. But before we get to that, I want to say this is kind of an interesting take, and I'm not sure that we've seen this in quite a while, but this is not boding well for Jerry Jones and his money-making machine. Per the NFLPA, per the NFLPA right now, if you look at the top-selling jerseys in the NFL, Number one, numero uno, C.J. Stroud. Number two, Pat Mahomes. Number three, Adrian Hutchinson. Number four, Amon St. Brown. Joe Burrow, even though he's having a rough start to the season. Jalen Hurts. Jameer Gibbs. You got the Lions. This is what's crazy. There's three Lions in there. And then you finally get to Micah Parsons, 49ers with Brock Purdy, and the Chiefs with Harrison Buckner. I want to say that this is the first time that, in a long time that I can remember that the Dallas Cowboys haven't been like two or three in the top ten. In fact, usually it's like in the top two you have a couple of them. For Dak and CD not to be on there at all, only Micah Parsons, and Micah Parsons is sitting at nine? The shine on the star has definitely waned right there. And this is where Jerry Jones needs to wake up. Jerry Jones, the Cowboys, the fan base is pissed. The fan base is pissed for what happened last year. You came through, you told us we we're going to go all in, and we've done moves like we did in 2020. I sat here 2020 fresh in my mind where we went out as always i i it, it it drives me crazy because the cowboys just figure that they're running a fantasy football organization a fantasy football team because it seems like they always believe well we can just plug a guy in here and we'll get his results and it'll work because they always make their free agent signings and things during training camp late in the season where they don't get a chance to practice and they always go for the slim pickings of what's left over. Toaster leavings. You know, you turn toaster upside down like Al Bundy did, shake it out and see what's left in there. Yeah, we got crumbs. We did this in 2020. We got Gerald McCoy. We got excited about Gerald McCoy. Because we're like, oh, he's been a stud in Tampa Bay. We got Clinton Ha Ha Dix, who had a couple of good years in there. Oh, he's played pretty good. Played pretty, pretty good. Okay. We got Don Terry Poe. Oh, man, we got a big man in the middle. We got a big man in the middle. Oh, boy. And we got Emerson Griffin. Man, Emerson, 
you know, he's done some great things, some crazy things in Minnesota, but some great things in Minnesota on there. We got some great guys, and we brought them all in right around and during training camp. And you know what we got out of all those guys? Gerald McCoy got injured before the season started, never played the snap for the Cowboys. Clinton Ha Ha Dix was cut before training camp was over. Don Terry Poe came in extra fat, okay, supersized, and didn't bust a grape. Emerson Griffin was okay. And our defense suffered because of it. Cowboys traded a six and a seven round pick, you know, swapping them to get Jordan Phillips during training camp. A guy that the Giants said, we're good, we don't need him. Journeyman, been around a while, and apparently <laughs> he's not happy about being put on IR. As he said, it's above my pay grade, you got to talk to the powers that be. He doesn't seem to be happy about being sat down. But this is, unfortunately, where we are with the Cowboys, we get excited, we have a good game, and so on. But at the moment, the problems we've had with the Dallas Cowboys, as we've said, running the football in the playoffs we couldn't do, and stopping the run against Green Bay or against any of the teams last year, said we need to do more. The Cowboys putting Band-Aids on a major gash. No pun intent. Actually, maybe that was a pun intent. Actually, it was an unintentional pun, but it fit. The Cowboys are getting gashed on defensive line, and they're putting Band-Aids on it. We're bleeding out. And so this is where I have, I liked what I saw in training camp. I loved what I saw at Mossy Smith. I loved the attitude of the coach who was working with the guys who seemed like he was working on getting them to understand the port of attack. Now, maybe, just maybe, all this is because we're in a new situation. We got a new coach. We got a new play calling. We got some new parts and so on. But at the moment, our highest rated defensive lineman isn't in the top 100. We got to do better than this. And having the Baltimore Ravens come in, this is like the match made up from hell for the Dallas Cowboys right now. You got Derrick Henry, who wanted to be here as a running back. Derrick Henry wanted to be here, who rushed for 90 yards last week in a loss with a Baltimore Raven team that rushed over 150 yards last week. Coming here feeling dissed by the Cowboys because they didn't even pick up the phone to have a conversation that he's going to be unhappy with the Baltimore Ravens team that is staring down the barrel of 0-3. The last time they started at 0-3, they finished up 5-11. and Not wanting their season to be over. This season is on the line right here, right now. And you've got Jordan Phillips who didn't bust a grape last week, who they put on injured reserve with a wrist injury that he basically says, there's nothing wrong with my wrist. They're basically trying to hide the fact that they traded for him and he's not working. Or maybe trying to say, we need you to do better and we're, we're just going to stash you for now and, and try and bring in Carlos Watkins, who we took off of Washington's practice squad. There's that. And to acerbate it, Mozzie Smith leaves practice yesterday with tightness in the back. Will the season be over if the Dallas Cowboys lose to the Ravens? No, because the Eagles are just as bad. The Eagles have just as many problems, if not more, than we do. But if you could get this win going against Baltimore, things look a lot better at 2-1 and one than it does at 1-2, and two, knowing that you got the Lions coming up in a few weeks and the 49ers that are having issues and things as well. You need to get this win. On the other side of this fence, the Cowboys, two philosophies are going to be just definitely in play here. Derrick Henry, the bellwether back, 
basically the running game besides Lamar Jackson for the Ravens versus the Dallas Cowboys that are doing running back by committee. Thus far, the Cowboys are one of the worst running teams in football. You have to say what Jerry Jones, and it, 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 I know it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that our running game is one of the worst in football. It doesn't matter that, you know, we're one of the worst run-stopping teams in football. In the end, we'll look and say, Dak, you suck. Dak, you suck. It's all Dak. Get rid of the quarterback. And this is where you need to be mindful and understand it saying, if you want to do better, you got to have more than just CeeDee Lamb. The Cowboys' whole philosophy is, is we're going to pay Dak and we're going to play CD, and we're okay with just regulars. And unfortunately, that has been the Cowboys' philosophy for too long, and we're expecting a different result. So don't be disappointed if this season doesn't work out the way we want. But it's not too late to change the direction and maybe the fact that the Cowboys aren't selling jerseys, the fact that the Cowboy fans aren't quite as excited as they usually are, maybe that will get Jerry and Stephen Jones to get off their ass and do something about it. You have a good cap situation at the moment. You got $26 million for this year. You've got more space coming for next year. And you have triggers in CD and Dak Prescott's contract that would enable you to take on another contract. And this is the opportunity for Jerry Jones to win back the fan base. Win back the fan base. And have a chance to do something great is to be bold. Go out there, similar to what you did with bringing in an Amari Cooper. Go out there, get yourself another weapon. Go out there and get yourself another defensive lineman who is not just a journeyman, you know, so-so player. Make some bold moves that say, you know what, we're going to risk the biscuit. We're going to shoot for the fences. We're going to try and make this team better because you look around the NFL. You got as good a chance with everybody else if you make those moves. And they need to make these moves. Will they? I don't know. I don't know. But if you are a player on the Dallas Cowboys defense, you need to take that thing personal that you sucked. That you, each and every single one of them, have to get up off the mat and show the F up on Sunday. Every one of them. They should feel embarrassed by what happened with New Orleans. And my hope is, my hope is, much like the Arizona Cardinals game was the high water mark of dysfunction for the Cowboys last year that that's the moment that the team woke the F up and said we got to do better than this the Cowboys clearly after the San Francisco after the Cardinals games after the bye week got themselves together where they were a competent team now we'll see if we can do this but we can't be one of the worst run-stopping teams in football and one of the worst running teams in football and think that we're going to do anything. It just doesn't work. So, here we go. You know how we roll. We have to take our medicine and listen to the trash that they're speaking on ESPN. Let, let's roll. We just had this discussion about outlawing two high defenses is ridiculous. There are ways to beat it if you have competent QB play. Mm. I'll Correct. say two things quickly. One, never what, seen what, position, what position did Lewis <laughs> play? Safety. Safety. Okay, then yep. two, I know, this, right. I know this from experience. 
Lu anything Mel says, Lewis disagrees with. <laughs> just immediately. Because the draft. We, we yeah. do the draft together. Like, my experience is they have not agreed on anything in the five years that I've been working with the two of them. So Mel says yes. Lewis says no. It's just sort of ingrained in their personalities. Okay. I'm Team Lewis in that, by the way. Week Four. three. Well, my, maybe the most anticipated game involves two teams coming off of stunning losses. Ravens, Cowboys. Baltimore hopes to avoid going to 0-3 for the first time since 2015. Dallas, meanwhile, looks to get back on track after being just demolished at home by the Saints. I want you to listen to Micah Parsons and how he describes what happened and what he thinks of it. Go, Micah. To me, not having everyone want it as bad as you do, that, that kind of hurts the most, you know? Because, like, if you wanted to take a beating like that, 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 that says a lot. I mean, it's like a approval weekend. And, and I'm not just, you know, I'm not putting anything on any of my teammates. I'm saying myself included. Like, I need to step up. We all need to step up. Like, this, like, it would hurt me more if we all didn't step up. We all played down to that standard again. So, Kmart, I mean, you're a reporter, and, and mm -hmm. so I, did your ears sort of perk up as mine did with the yeah. first thing he says there, not having everyone want, want it, as, it bad as bad as you as do. do. Yes. What's he saying? No, he's calling out his teammates. Um, and I kind of like it. Normally, I normally I get on Micah for saying a bit too much because it's early in the season. He's trying to send a message. Like, we all – that's embarrassing. He's talking about I'm ticked off that we got embarrassed like that. The – Key for Micah, however, is you cannot say that and not come out and be dominant. If you're going to talk about your teammates, everybody not wanting it as bad as you, then you have to lead and show everybody this is the standard that we have to play up. J-Mac, you played defense, so and you had leaders on your defense. No one is disputing that he's a great player. Yeah. Are you good with him saying that? No, I'm not. And I think now being in the media, we love it because we can run this soundbite for the next week and talk about it as <laughs> drama. Mm -hmm. But I look at this, when you start calling out your teammates in that sense, now you're worried because just like if we don't have guys playing as hard as Micah Parsons or wanting it as much as him, that we have bigger issues. I used to always say it, when you're in a, in a locker room and you see in the media reports that, hey, so-and-so team, they just had a players-only meeting and they drew out all their grievances, it's too late. Like, they're done. Stick a fork in them. Because at that point, there's nothing, there's nowhere to go from there. If you've gotten to this point, especially now going into week three, and we're already calling out guys, after the collapse they had last year, defensively to say guys don't want it as much, this is the next time they were mm -hmm. in this building from that Green Bay Packers game, and that's what they put on tape. Okay, here's my question to you. Yeah. Is the issue that Micah is saying it? In the public. Or the issue that what Micah is saying is accurate? Because you're talking about, well, there's a team issue and yeah. they don't have guys that are giving max effort, or, then that's a problem. All, all maybe Micah's doing is saying, hey, we – everybody's not, all 11 aren't on the same page. There's that, ways to do it. We're here fair. sitting at that the desk. Fair. If Dan never shuts the hell up, I don't need to go well, on my next show well, and be like, uh -oh. I wish Dan Orlowski would just stop talking. <laughs> I go to Dan and say, hey, Dan, right here it says Jason Nett. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the case it is, I don't need to say it out there. There's a hidden message in there. He's exactly. doing the mic up right now. I let, feel like there's a hidden message. Let's be clear. That, we'll, we'll but, be that's, but, that's, but again, Jason's no, point is valid. You go straight to the source. That, yeah. he, he just had a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> but could have had a team meeting. Could have had a team meeting. I love the point. No, just like Micah, you'll then explain. Oh, but it's, it's me. It's all of us. Yeah. It's not. But it's mostly Dan. Here's, here, here's don't come real question. Here, here, I gotta stay on this because <laughs> what he's talking about is guys not want, was that an effort issue like to me if I would have just watching it and I defer to you guys because you guys I, played it and all I do so was the Saints it. that didn't look for, like an effort issue yeah. the Saints game for me it was more of a structural thing it was more of a getting whooped thing and that's kind of what Marcus Spears said on Monday he was like Dan I was watching defensive tackle six yards down the field <laughs> I so told I, you that they, they were like both, they, they were certainly. like D-backs I also would say this and correct me if I'm wrong I don't feel this is the first time that Micah has kind of yeah. referenced this or the Cowboys have referenced this as like a lack of being all in a lack of effort a lack of effort everybody playing a certain way so it's one game I think this weekend there's another big challenge yeah. for them but I, I don't like the fact that this is again something as a narrative in, in Dallas look at, at the risk of oversimplifying it I am watching big much bigger people knocking markedly smaller people directly <laughs> backwards look I could try as hard as I possibly could if Damian Woody wanted to move me he would do it sure. and my problem would not be an effort issue and I'm, I'm only yeah. I'm not trying to put myself in this position but what I'm suggesting is that looked to me like they got much bigger guys that 
that are pushing around much smaller guys. I don't know. How, I'm, I'm not. I didn't see guys not trying hard. Right. I saw a team that didn't look like they had a chance. Well, that's the beat. That's out to beat the Dallas Cowboys and to feed this defense. We've seen it when they went up to Buffalo last season and Josh Allen barely passed the football and they got mauled. We've seen it in the Green Bay game in the playoffs. We just witnessed the New Orleans Saints have 134 yards before contact. We witnessed the New Orleans Saints offensive line reestablish the offensive line <laughs> down the football field. So when you can move a man from point A to point B, Against his will, there's no worse feeling in the National Force Football League. Obedient. But, but, but I, I, what I want to get to here, what we have to get to the Baltimore part of this yeah. a little bit later because I think there's so much, but I think this is important. J-Mac, is effort an issue? We're talking about scheme. We're talking about personnel. Micah's making it sound like it's effort. Do you see an issue with effort as you watch this tape? I don't, but I think when you're within a locker room, especially you're sitting in those defensive meetings and you're there all week long, you're saying, hey, we're going to do this versus that. And I think for Micah, when you're not seeing guys do that or attempting to get there, it may not be that you're not firing off the ball hard, but hey, if we have this formation, you're supposed to be standing over there and you're over here, then that's an issue beyond just the coaching is telling you what to do, but you're not executing it. Super quick. When I watch the Detroit Lions defensively, I watch violence. When I watch the Dallas Cowboys defensively, I don't. Yeah, I mean, they're sort of a finesse-based defense meant to play from the lead and try to yes. turn you yes. over, and they're not getting the lead, and they're getting bludgeoned in every... With Harry and Jason, there's an old saying... All right, so there we have it. And to make things worse, you know, this is where... <laughs> oh, boy. I, I hate to bring up something like this, but I was looking. I was just curious with... The moves that the Cowboys have made. Now, John Ridgway, you know, one of my favorites, um, almost sacked Dak Prescott. Almost sacked Dak. Doing pretty good in New Orleans. Jonathan Hankins. Hankins, five solo tackles, um, I think two quarterback hits, a couple assists. Not doing too shabby with Seattle. We traded for Jonathan Phillips. And that uh, trade has become official. Just saying. All right, you good people. See you guys tonight. Uh, 8 o'clock, we'll start doing our live stream for Thursday night football. We're going to have a busy weekend. The Cowboys play at 4. There's actually a doubleheader Monday night. Uh, with the Commanders playing as well. So we'll be starting out probably about 7.30 on Monday uh, for the